Officer Patrick O'Rourke was a devoted husband, a loving father, a dedicated police officer, and he had a steadfast faith in God. Then on the night of September 9, 2012, just as Patrick's shift ended on the West Bloomfield Township Police Force, he assisted fellow officers on a domestic disturbance call. Um, I went to bed just like normal, and um, about 1.30, uh, I heard the doorbell ringing, and I wasn't, it was, it confused me. I felt like I was dreaming, because it, Pat usually comes in through the garage door, and the garage door would go up. So it took me a minute to realize what was going on. Once I realized the doorbell was ringing, I um, came down the stairs and opened the door and saw um, our friends Rick and Tara. They're both from the department, and they were in uniform. They uh, asked if they could come in. I let them in, and then uh, we went and sat down on my couch, and uh, Tara told me that he had been um, shot and killed. I will never forget the night, that's for sure. It was a Sunday evening, and uh, I was called, uh, awakened from a sound sleep. And when I finally came to, uh, I realized the name and, uh, and I said, I think I better get up. And then Rick and Tara took, us, uh, took me down to the hospital so I could see him one last time. And, uh... Although seeing Patrick for the last time was an unbearable loss, Amy also knew that emotional healing began with forgiveness. Patrick would not have wanted it any other way. But um, I, do, I do know when we got to the hospital to see Pat, and um, I was talking with Rick there in the room, and um, it just came right out of me. And I knew it, but it's something I verbalized that, that Pat would forgive his killer. Um, and at that point, his killer was still alive. And I said yes, and I did too. Um, I didn't know how everything was going to turn out, but uh, I mean, I knew that beyond, beyond a doubt. There was just no doubt at all, and um, I found comfort in that. Patrick O'Rourke was always a man with a strong commitment to God. He attended Mass regularly and studied the Gospel frequently. During their dating years, Amy was a non-Catholic, but Patrick's faith was too undeniable. And we had some fantastic discussions about Catholic versus Protestant um, faith um, ideals, and uh, and in all those conversations, then he went through RCIA to become confirmed because he had not done that sacrament yet. And I went with him, not intending to become Catholic, but in hearing all of those things and all those great, I mean, we had some great in the late into the night discussions. Um, I felt the pull to the Catholic Church. So um, we were confirmed together. I had my first communion uh, that Easter before we got married. And as a father, he was always eager to share his faith with his children. He loved our children. And I really enjoyed On Sundays, we would come home from Mass, and he would pull up the um, Jesus of Nazareth movie. Um, he'd watched it many, 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 many times, so he knew it very well. And he would pull up whatever gospel reading we had seen that day, or heard that day. And then he would sit with them on the couch and let them watch it, which was really neat. And I'd be in the kitchen making breakfast or whatever. It was just fun to watch him teach them. Patrick's funeral was held at St. John's Parish in Fenton, where he was a longtime parishioner. More than 6,000 attended. It was a grand send-off. You know, obviously it's the, uh, the largest uh, funeral celebration I've ever been part of, really. Um, it's, uh, it was just incredible. Um, to see uh, and, and to feel the people's warmth. And what people will remember most is Amy, in an impromptu moment, addressing the funeral mass. On the day of the funeral, uh, Amy was sitting right here in, in the first row in front of the sanctuary. And uh, as we sat down after communion, um, she motioned to me, um, telling me that she wanted to get up and say something. This was not planned. And uh, I said, sure. So uh, she got up and brought Stephen with her in her arms and addressed this assembly. And, uh, un you know, just off the cuff. I mean, there was no speech or anything. She just from her heart. And I got up and I ended up um, talking about the sights and sounds of the church. And it just, you know, everything that I feel and love, but it just came out of me. And then I said, um, and I, you know, I, I want you to know too that if uh, you aren't 
going to church or you strayed off of a faith path, you know, to get he would want you to get back on it and he'd want you to not be mad at God through all this or blame God or be angry at God. He would want you to turn to God. But it was a, a marvelous uh, testimony, you know, that she offered on behalf of Patrick. And uh, I, I could see the stamina and the strength within her, you know, on that day. I mean, she just did not falter. Yeah. Patrick O'Rourke was laid to rest at St. John Cemetery in Fenton. He leaves behind a wife and four children. But he also leaves a legacy of his strong Catholic faith and the power of forgiveness. He said to me, the whole reason we're here is to help each other get to heaven. And he meant it. So, you know, when I think about why did I say I forgave, why did that come out of me out loud, I, you know, maybe it's to help other people let go of whatever they're carrying around that isn't going to help them get to heaven. And if that, if that happened, wonderful. And praise God. Um, I, I, I love hearing any little tidbits of people's um, faith increasing or anything through, through my suffering. That's wonderful. Um, and I, I just want to give God all the glory for that because it's not me. <laughs> Again, like I said, I just felt the Holy Spirit all around me, that, especially that first week. And uh, yeah, He's here to help us. He really is. I mean, God will make good out of horrible things. And I know that firsthand now.